Hey, my friends, I'm not much of a person for unboxing things on YouTube or, you know, being, um, I, I'm a video game collector. I, I like collecting stuff, but that's no, definitely was not the purpose of my YouTube channel and definitely, uh, I don't know, not the, not the kind of personality I'm trying to promote. Uh, I do like collecting stuff and I order, uh, um, quite, quite a few things, um, both from United States sellers and Japanese sellers and occasionally other, other places in the world too. But, um, I, I just, this is probably one of the, uh, I don't know how much footage I, I, I don't think, I don't definitely, there's, I definitely know there's no unboxing footage posted as of the time of recording this, but, um, I may have a couple other things that I've have in the archives, I guess, but. Um, my point is, uh, th this is just really nicely packaged, I guess, is <laughs> is what I'm getting at through all the, uh, <laughs> through all the BS there. I, I just, um, I've, again, unboxed many things, just, uh, and some of them are pretty impressively packaged, and I guess I could have done a video sooner, but, on those, but this is just very well done, I, I'll, I'll maybe list the name of the seller, like, somewhere, like, I, I don't, honestly don't remember who, the specific name of this one, but the, the, the utilization of space in this box, you know, uh, shipping is kind of weird right now because of uh, COVID and stuff like that. The, uh, uh, policies are a little different. So, um, and, uh, price has gone up for everything basically that that equates to. So, um, the usage of the space in this box, I mean, you could have fit like one more, I mean, this person has obviously calculated out, like you could have fit like one more cartridge game, and maybe one more box Super Famicom game, but it's just really well done. Um, it's uh, Bomberman 5, it looks like. So, um, collecting, uh, finish up the, collect the Bomberman collection, basically. Uh, that's the, uh, that's interesting. It's not even a big box. I thought I thought this would be a big box, but it's the same same size. It uh, has a figurine in there. Go in more in detail on this. I, I mostly just want to show how well packaged this was. It's quite impressive. That's a link to the past Japanese version of pieces. Japanese version. It's a little light in comparison. That one just probably has a pretty heavy uh, manual or whatever. That's pieces. I think it's called the Jigsaw Party in Japan or something like that. And let's see, what is that? That's a uh, versus collection. It's just some, uh, uh, it's another. One of the few kind of multi-tap compatible games. It's like a four or five player game. It's some kind of simple uh, party style games, I guess. Oh. Doesn't matter if they tumble a little bit because they're so well packaged. Let's see, we got uh, maybe that's Bomberman Panic World. Uh, between this seller and another one, I got basically all the Super Famicom Bombermans. I already had all the N64 ones. Uh, that's uh, Rock and Roll Racing. That's a cool one. Well, I'll definitely. Uh, Take a look at all of these a little bit closer. I'm just showing the initial. Maybe Bomberman 3? Uh, that's Bomberman 5. Maybe the other one was 4. This guy had 3, 4, and 5, I think. And then the, the Bomberman beat on and stuff like that. This is N64. Uh, Disney Dance Dance Revolution. Get to that later. Uh, this is a Tetris 2 Famicom. Tetris 2 plus Bombless. Oh, this is probably the, uh, I got Starfy 1, 2, and 3 on Game Boy Advance, I think is what that is. That'd be, uh, either Whip Rush or Strider, one of the Sega Genesis games. And the other one will be, whichever one one was. It's Pachinko 365. That's the other Sega Genesis game. Strider, uh, Whip Rush. This is a Tetris Flash versus a Japanese exclusive, along with the other Tetris 2. So it kind of has, I think I have pretty much all the Tetris games. That's the original Super Mario Brothers, so that's going to be a pretty cool shelf piece there. Obviously I have that in many other forms. This is kind of an interesting one. Um, it's the uh, uh, fishing controller. I'm not sure, I know it works with one game, but I don't know about any other ones. Yeah, the loose cartridge is also in this box here, I believe. We have uh, a. Oh, it's one of the Game Boy Gallery or uh, 
the Game and Watch galleries, I think. Games. Game and Watch Gallery 1 and 2. That's what the other one is. And we got the uh, Konami Justifier. And then, oh, what's this? That appears to be a little bonus. They gave me how sweet. I'll uh, look into that a little bit closer too. I definitely didn't order that. And as always, uh, part of the deal for me anytime from Japanese side, we have some uh, pages of Japanese new paper. Kind of interesting stuff sometimes too. I always save it to at least for repackaging material. So we'll maybe dive into a couple of a couple of these more interesting ones. This thing's definitely pretty cool. If you uh it actually has like like gears that have some kind of resistance in there. That's super cool. Got the A button here is like a casting release or whatever. I don't know if it has any motion sensor in it, but um, I, have to, I have to research that. I know this game is definitely uh, um, renowned as being pretty cool. Um, it's from the Earthbound, the same, uh, 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 what do you want to call it? Executive producer, Earthbound or whatever, the, the lead, kind of lead director behind the game, so... Pretty cool stuff, I would say. It did have this, uh, the registration card. I don't know if there's any other documentation with it. Maybe it came with a manual or something, but it would all be in Japanese anyways. So not really something I could read. So it comes with, uh, came with the game and came with this uh, registration card or whatever. So that's nice. Um, this appears to be an absolutely pretty much brand new condition, you know. Um, so that's cool, um, and it appears that it does take batteries, probably. It's likely to be a, a, a rumble feature, if I had to guess. I don't know if it needs batteries necessarily to work at all, but I will, I'll definitely check that out. Well, further evidence of this seller just being an absolute sweetheart. Um, these appear to be uh, a lithium replacement double A's that we put in there. Uh, they appear to be brand new. Might not be, I suppose, but uh, either way, um, there's no way there are anything other than lithium batteries for sure. I, I would say, um, just I, I don't think anyone would put those in there, brand new. And I'm sure if I look these up, that'll be a uh, lithium ion, just by the weight of it too. So. Uh, very nice of them to do that. E again, even if I were to put this on my shelf and never never actually play with it, it wouldn't leak and destroy the terminals or whatever. So everything was beautiful and clean in there. So that's uh, that's quite nice to see. So uh, that'll be. I'll probably do a whole video separately on this. Uh, to be honest with you, at some point this thing's cool, and I want to learn how to play the game and uh, and use this controller. Um, Pins look pretty clean on there. It's cool with the camera. I can actually get kind of a better view than real life. It looks very clean. I don't think I have to clean those at all. It probably bodes well for all the other games I got as well. Uh, this seller is definitely very honorable. So. Cool. So here's the uh, full lot of the Bomberman games I got from this seller. Um, and package them all and whatever. Uh, they were, they slipped me another little surprise in the form of a uh, some kind of collector's card from, couldn't quite identify what uh, what series or whatever, but uh, it's a kind of a common thing uh, um, from ordering from a, a seller where you get you know, more than a few things. It's common for them to slip a little bonus like that in there, so that was nice to see. I added it to my collection. Um, as you can see, this one, the Bomberman 4, has got a, some kind of store sticker on it. And uh, the B-Dom on here has a, there's actually a couple different stickers on it. But 
those kind of things don't really bother me. Those are authentic, uh, period accurate stickers, I guess. So, um, just kind of adds to the charm really. And the box itself is pretty nice. This is kind of the roughest one of the bunch, uh, four here. So whoever owned this, uh, probably liked that game the most. So, uh, five is very crisp. No, uh, no dents or dings or creases or anything. Very minty. And uh, same thing with Palmer, uh, Palmer Panic World here. Nice crisp edges everywhere. So. And this one's just got a little sun fading and a little kind of kind of pooch there, but pretty clean overall. Uh, especially considering that it's got some extra stuff in it. Uh, this little figurine here does appear to be fully functional. That's uh, and again, brand new, so it's pretty amazing. Someone else just bought this and put it on their shelf. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I have no intention of, I don't have any other toys in that series, so I'm not gonna wear it down or anything, so. Um, and then from another seller, I got Bomberman 1, 2, and 3 coming, and that will be the, uh, that'll be the full collection. And uh, I actually already have loose cartridges of all these games already, so uh, these will just be um, complete box uh, shelf items. I don't have too many complete series that are like that where I have a uh, playable cartridges and then uh, completing boxes on the shelf so uh, but the super super Nintendo Bomberman series they will have pretty well covered and this is the rest of the Super Famicom games from this bundle or uh, Japanese Super Nintendo if you like uh, rock and roll racing here which uh, is a pretty cool um, just kind of I uh, guess piece of video game history. They put some kind of uh, um, they put licensed, you know, rock and roll songs on there and stuff. Um, it's a racing game, so the Japanese version will be pretty much uh, just as easy to play as the English version. So, um, and it, getting the uh, U.S. version complete in box would be out of my price range for sure. So, uh, got the cartridge and. Got, got a nice complete in box Japanese version basically for what the cartridge itself would have cost me or maybe even a little bit less uh, for the US version so um, this is just a I have an English version of this already this is a link to the past so again just kind of a cool shelf piece uh, this one this one's complete this one's complete I'm pretty sure um, I just realized there was one of them here yeah that one's complete you see it's got the manual in there This is a Versus collection here, which has got some, again, kind of uh, four-player mini games and stuff, so it's one of the few kind of multi-tap compatible games. And then uh, this is uh, Pieces, or Jigsaw Party is called in the Japanese uh, release. So um, this one actually doesn't have the manual in it. Um, not that big of a deal to me. I said this, I have the English version already, which is the one I'll play, and this is just going to be a shelf piece. So... Um, Probably I'm gonna be the only one who knows that the manual's not in there. So, no, me and you guys, I guess. So that's the that's the rest of the Super Famicom game. So pretty happy about those as well. So this one had some uh, sticker stickers removed from it or whatever. Maybe the paint camera's not quite picking up as well as, well as uh, I am. But it's definitely smeared some uh, yeah, kind of some almost like scratches to it or whatever. It's not sticky at all, so that's pretty impressive. I mean, it looks like clear, kind of glue smear or something. Interesting. All right, and this uh, will round off the rest of the box games from this lot. Uh, first and foremost, we have uh, the original Super Mario Brothers Famicom cartridge here. So uh, I obviously have the this game in many forms, as uh, most gamers would, I guess. Um, so I have the NES versions, just loose, loose cartridges for 1, 2, and 3. I have the loose Famicom cartridges also. So this is, uh, uh, this is the only one of the, uh, of 1, 2, and 3 for the Famicom I got complete in box. Just, uh, again, as a shelf piece. So kind of the, the pretty significant part of gaming history, I think everyone could agree. Uh, I also have, uh, from another seller, I have... Uh, the original Donkey Kong arcade adaption for the Famicom too, so those two will kind of be, I'll put those two on a shelf kind of next to each other as uh, 
Um, anyways, at this uh, Friend 64 from the Disney Dance Dance Revolution or Disney Dance Museum, or I think is the official name of it. I recently got the finally got the dance pad for it. I got a loose cartridge of this game a long time ago, uh, but only recently came up with a nice box version of the dance pad, and uh, that came with another loose cartridge. And then I uh, figured I might as well get a, uh, a complete box of the game too. This is in absolutely mint condition as well. So I'll uh, be sure to put this one on a box protector and um, put it on the shelf with the others. We got the Game & Watch Gallery 1 and 2 here, complete in box. Um, these were Japanese games to begin with. So seems like getting the... Um, the, getting the Game Boy compilations in the Japanese version seems pretty appropriate, so uh, be sure to check those out at some point. I'll uh, take those out of the box probably and just put them in with the Game Boy games and then put the boxes on the shelf. That's usually what I do with uh, any games I don't have duplicates of. If it's a game I actually want to uh, want to play, I'll take it, take the cartridge itself out of the box and just leave everything else in the box on the shelf. And, uh, and then if I have a duplicate, obviously I leave the whole. Uh, the whole thing in the box. So these are a couple more of uh, uh, Japanese exclusive Tetrises. I think I have, at least for the Nintendo Nintendo consoles that were released in um, in the retro era. I guess I have. Um, I'm sneaking up on having all the Japanese exclusive Tetrises. So um, these a couple more. These are also just very nice condition. Got a little little tear there. If when it was open the first time or something. Uh, this one seems to be pretty clean. I don't think it has that. So that's the only blemish of those two. Um, and again, same thing. I'll, uh, not sure. I mean, I'm not a huge Tetris fan. I may just keep these in the box. I have probably enough versions of Tetris for my liking. Um, but we'll see. I had a Tetris uh, Battle Guide in the other day too, which is a four-player Tetris for uh, Super Famicom. So... Uh, they said sneak it up on having all the Tetrises. All right, and to wrap up this uh, kind of collection haul video, I guess we got um, a couple of uh, Sega Mega Drive or Sega Genesis games here, whatever you like. We got Whip Rush, which is a uh, side-scrolling shooter, and we have uh, Strider, which is a uh, kind of plat uh, what do you call it, action platformer kind of thing. Um, very cool game adaptation of the. Uh, of the arcade version, let me see it says, if it would focus, yeah, reprogram game, I assume that's Japanese Ringo for a port or whatever, back in the day, label overlapping the top there, um, I'm not sure if any of those will have the hardware or software level region lockout, um, I think they're early enough, that probably not. Um, some of the later games, uh, they didn't just not fit in the uh, other consoles, there's a actual software level lockout that you'd have to uh, resolve with a a switch or whatever on the console mod switch. So um, haven't had to do that yet for any of the games I've imported because they all been of the earlier variety. So uh, here for Game Boy Advance, we have uh, the Legend of Star for you one, two, and three. Which again, uh, haven't played them before, but because uh, I have no means to play them other than I don't use emulators and stuff, so. Um, uh, these just look uh, pretty cool from various gameplay videos I saw, so I got all three of them for I think under 20 bucks with this deal, so it seems like a pretty good buy. And then uh, this one is uh, kind of an oddity, it's a uh, pachinko parlor, like uh, it's kind of like uh, maybe Vegas Stakes, or is Vegas Stakes King Cruiser on that one? Or for sure like Caesar's Palace on Super Nintendo. But uh, for a pachinko parlor, so you can kind of uh, as a uh, uh, a live, you know, like a live pachinko parlor, you can walk around and then play the different machines. Um, for some reason, the box version of this game uh, seems to fetch about seventy-five or eighty bucks right now. So I don't know if it's some YouTuber made it a bit of a meme or something like that. But uh, it's a pachinko three sixty-five. It's not the only. Uh, um, this is six. It's a 665. Oh no, that's no, 365. Look at that. Um, anyways, not the only pachinko game on the N64, and definitely by no means the only uh, video game pachinko simulator in Japan. But uh, 
Uh, this seems to be a pretty cool one. So uh, when I get Mac together and have a capture card in my possession, we'll uh, try to get some footage of this and get some get some lols. So, uh, but that's it for this uh, for this particular haul. We got some good stuff. Uh, the uh, price was definitely affordable for what it was, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So. Got the next box already. Enjoying Mac 2, thanks. Get these out of here. Okay, so in the first bundle there. We've, uh, as I pointed out, we've got Joe and Mac 2, uh, which is quite a variation um, from the first game. I have a completely different main character. Uh, almost seems like a completely different game that they uh, threw in the series or something, but that's that's it. Joe and Mac 2, and then there's uh, Joe and Mac 3, which is a J Japan exclusive, I believe. That's the only one I don't have um, for that collection. Uh, just loose cartridges. I'm not gonna get those complete in box. Don't don't care about that game that much or that series that much. Um, but uh, would be nice to have the all all three of the games at least. And you kind of that's the collector mentality, right? You got two out of the three. Might as well get the last one. Uh, and we got this will complete uh, my Kirby collection for Super Nintendo. We got Kirby's Dream Course and uh, Kirby's Dream Land three here. Again, I already have loose carts of these, um, so those will uh, those will be just shelf items. This was released in all regions, I believe. I have I actually don't have an English cart of this yet. That's probably something I'm going to I'm going to get at some point. I think it's only about thirty bucks still. I'll probably get an English cart, um, but I have a loose Japanese cart, and I have a um, have this box now. And then uh, same thing, Kirby's Dream Land 3, I already have a loose cart. Uh, the graphics on this one are really cool, kind of hand-drawn, I'm sure you can see, maybe on the back. Mm, maybe not so much. But uh, graphics are definitely cool in that one. Anyway, so that's the, that'll complete the Kirby collection next to uh, the Kirby um, Superstar. So put all those together, and then I uh, already have a Super Game Boy, uh, several, in fact. Uh, this is this is one I just got for my friend. I added it on with, when uh, uh, buying all these other items. This was only like 10 extra bucks, and uh, uh, figured my friend would like to have it. I gave him a Super Famicom a while ago, and uh, this would interface with that, obviously. So, very cool. It's packed with color. Nice rainbow. This is uh, Kirby's Dream Land 3 here. Just uh, unboxed it to clean it up and whatnot. The pins are pretty dirty. Um, so yeah, this one uh, came with this cute little sticker. It was uh, part of the original, you know, was packed in with the game originally. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. That is still there and some uh, uh, shows Self-control. Either it was uh, an adult that purchased it, or a kid with good, really good self-control. The only thing you can actually, really, truly control is what you think. Okay, and then uh, here we have the rest of the Bomberman collection: one, two, and three. So that's uh, now I have a complete Super Nintendo Bomberman collection. So that's pretty cool. You even got the uh, the multi-tap. I've had that for a while though, so that make a nice little display. We need a whole shelf just for Bomberman stuff, pretty much. Uh, we got Pilot Wings, classic, Super Nintendo classic. Uh, again, have the English card of this, but uh, you know, why not? It's a classic game. And then here we have Space Invaders, which of course only the uh, advanced 16-bit power of the Super Nintendo can handle a game like this. You need to, need us. They couldn't release this game until it came out on Super Nintendo, obviously. This is definitely pretty interesting. It looks like this cartridge got painted. Even like some smudging on the label, on the back label too. 
Like maybe it was yellowing and they painted it. I just can't understand why they would do that though. I mean, if it's yellow, it's yellow. You know, it's not like it's a super valuable game or something. Very strange, but. Yeah, maybe not paint, maybe just some kind of cleaning solution. Interesting. It's fun, but personally I think the whole idea of creatures from outer space is a little far-fetched. All right, we got another um, few Japanese games here delivered. There's nothing too special about the the packaging on this one. It, was, it wasn't bad, but uh, nothing to write home about, so it didn't bother showing me taking it out of the shipping box. Actually, um, this is uh, this uh, rounds uh, rounds off a couple of uh, kind of the end of uh, certain branches of the collection. I guess is what I'm trying to um, say. Mumble through. Um, so this is, uh, let's start with the loose games over here. We have a uh, custom robo, uh, one and two, uh, which is, uh, both look like pretty cool games to me. Um, and has a lot of options for customization for, uh, you know, making your own, uh, your own char uh, character, like mech kind of thing, basically. And then you um, battle them out and, uh, both games are, are fundamentally the same. I believe there's just a, uh, this V2 is just more of the same. So, as far as uh, loose cartridges go, these three are, are probably the last ones I'm going to get. And then the uh, last Legion UX is another um, mech fighter kind of game, kind of a different, uh, different style. But as far as loose games go, that's probably uh, probably the extent of, uh, of what I'm going to get uh, for myself, anyways. Um, you know, that's always a. Uh, I've <laughs> always open to uh, open to retracting that statement. I suppose I've, I've thought that kind of that, but for for the time being, those are uh, all the loose games I want to get. Um, these both of these are quite expensive. All, all three of these are quite expensive, complete in box, and uh, having no uh, other attachment to them, I, I don't mind just having the games. So uh, this is the last. <laughs> Again, also I've said that a couple times before, just because I was mistaken. Uh, but this is the last of the uh, N64 big boxes, uh, Japanese big boxes. Uh, this one's a little sun faded. Uh, the game is a uh, Choro Q, which is uh, known as Penny Racers in the Western world. Uh, definitely a game I uh, remember fondly from uh, from childhood, and uh, again, yeah, not playing the Japanese version, obviously, but. Um, and I don't believe I could be mistaken, but I don't believe they released a big box version in the U.S. Uh, the pack in with this one is a is this little uh, model. It's like an actual toy car, um, and this one is uh, as I'll, I'll unbox that one. Uh, the inside box is in very nice shape so, uh, for the game itself, and then uh, the uh, car is still in its package, un unassembled, uh, has been opened. So that was pretty cool. And this is uh, Snowboard Kids 2. I already have uh, loose English copies of this. Uh, both both one and two of this game. I really like this series. And um, I already had a complete in box version, a J Japanese version of the first one. So this is the second one. That's uh, this one's uh, was a little more obscure. Both games were pretty. I think were kind of a limited run. Um, it, or, or in all regions. I think it was the rarest in uh, the PAL region, uh, actually. I think it was an Australian exclusive, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but it was pretty uncommon in all regions, so uh, this one is usually a little more expensive, and uh, when buying these other items, I was able to get a pretty good deal on that one. And this is, I th again, uh, could be wrong about this, but I think this is the last of the uh, Japanese exclusive uh, N64 golf games. Um, again, I have a full, uh, at least loose collection of uh, North American games, the complete library, uh, but there were several uh, Japanese exclusive golf games, so that's one of them. Big fan of golfing games, so I will be looking forward to checking that one out. So um, I'll uh, unbox this one real quick because that's got some interesting stuff in it. Anyways, like I said, the, uh, the interior box for this is in uh, very nice condition, very minty. And then here's the 
uh, the pack and stuff. It looks like the uh, the frame of it all comes separately, and that's uh, you, you kind of assemble it together. I uh, see some kind of flakes of plastic in here. Yeah, some uh, I didn't see that before. Yeah, there's the little decal pack as well. And some kind of registration card maybe. Oh, and it's instructions. Cool. Um, maybe that's like some of the plast plastic chrome coming off the rims or something. Um, hard to say for sure. There's some kind of shiny flex in there, here and there. You know, but either here or there, it's not like I'm going to be taking that out anyhow. So that'll stay packed in there. And uh, nothing special about this, just the name cartridge and manual. And get it open. All the instruction cards and whatnot. So, so yeah, that's uh, that's this round of stuff. Let's get it. Get it. Get it.